Poddo. Welcome to A Pod Too Far, where we relive the 1980s Sunday afternoon spent watching old war movies. This time we're lacing up our football boots for a World Cup special, the greatest film ever made about prisoners of war and the beautiful game. Yes, it's Escape to Victory. I'm Rob Hutton, I write jokes about politics and serious books about history, and I'm joined by Duncan Weldon, who actually has been to a football match. I have been to a football match, and I normally write books about economics and history. I'm very interested in the war. I'm very interested in films. I grew up in the 1980s in South Buckinghamshire. I have never been to a football match. <laughs> I don't know. So, I, but, but you have now seen Escape to Victory. I have now seen. I, I saw Escape to Victory as a boy, and I have I, I have seen Escape to Victory again quite recently. And I've I've also watched real football matches. We should say at this point, this is this film. I think in the US, it's known as Victory, but uh, this is a British podcast for British people, and <laughs> uh, and it's it's just, and this is a who is the market for this film? Who is not an England football fan fundamentally? I mean, I, I, it's one of those films where. I just question a whole series of production decisions <laughs> that were made about what to green light, what not to green light. And presumably, presumably this went through several stages of what should we do? Should we make a, should we make a football film? Should, or should we make a war film? Or should we make a football war film with some Americans in it? I'm, 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 it's something I'm not going to make a habit of on this podcast because we do, we do read around the subject, we do research and all this, but I'm literally just going to read the introduction from Wikipedia. A 1981 American-British-Italian sports war film directed by John Huston and starring Sylvester Stallone, Michael Caine, Max von Sydow and Pele. <laughs> Numerous Ipswich Town players were also in the film. I mean, it's a, it's a tremendously strange film. I mean, it, it's fun. It's, it is fun. I, you know, I rewatched it for this. It was maybe the third time I've seen it. It's not one I've seen... Loads of times. I must have seen it on telly in the eight, late 80s, early 90s. And it is fun. It's a fun film. Yeah, no, it's actually of, of the war films I have made my children watch, this is the only one that they have thoroughly enjoyed. See, there we go. <laughs> so, basically, they, they hate this side of my life, but <laughs> they love this. As my 13-year-old said afterwards, well, it's not a war film. <laughs> It's set during a war. It's set during a war. It's set, it's set in a prisoner, prisoner of war, war camp. It yeah. has it has an opening that is pure prisoner of war camp opening. Yeah. The spotlights, the, yeah. the, the searchlight, the panning camera shot over the huts and the barbed wire, and a prisoner caught in the wire, caught in the searchlights, and he's machine gunned to death. It's classic, a, classic prisoner of war film opening, and it ends in a football stadium with a pitch invasion. <laughs> not, much, not the classic. Ending. Not a classic war film. Anyway, mm. it also, it has to be said. I mean, you, you ask how this got made. So far as I can tell from my limited internet research, literally nobody involved in this wanted to make this film. <laughs> Michael Caine wanted to work with Pele. Tremendous. Sylvester yeah. Stallone wanted to work with John Huston. John Huston directed the film. <laughs> John Huston, one of the greatest directors of the 20th century. Sylvester Sloan wanted to work with John Huston. John Huston wanted a large check. It, 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 it's, 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 and you can sort of tell, watching it, that basically nobody's, nobody's heart is, is quite in it. Yes, yeah, so Michael Caine, of course, you know, divides up his films into those he really wants to do for artistic reasons and those because he wanted to buy his mother a new house. Yes. And I think this is very much in the, in the latter category in some ways. Everything about this film is... So I'm, I'm absolutely going with, with this being a football film. But it has become a classic. So this is, this is one of these ones that they re-release on Blu-ray when there's a World Cup coming around. People do podcasts about when there's a World Cup <laughs> coming around. What is it about England football and prisoner of war movies? There's The Great Escape. You can't watch England play without hearing the, the band play The Great Escape theme. What, what's going on there, Duncan? I, I mean, I wished I knew. I wished I knew. But I think it, you know, it's, yeah, if you put this film in context... Early 1980s. So you've got a generation of, you know, big football fans at that point who have also been brought up watching, you know, The Great Escape and um, Dan Busters and Stalag Luft. All, all of these, all of these films, some prisoner of war based. And then, you know, clearly some marketing genius thought, these guys like these sort of films. They quite like Bobby Moore. He's got, he's got a World Cup winner's medal. What if we put Bobby Moore in a in prisoner a prison camp, camp yeah, in a prison camp for a film? There, there is a specific problem. I don't think that there are any good 
football films. That would be my starting point. Yes, much. I, I, I sort of want to defend the film Goal for nostalgic reasons, but I'm not going to attempt to do that. <laughs> and, and even sort of something like Ted Lasso, it struggles with the bits where they're playing football. Because, yeah. because the basic problem, it seems to me, is, is that actors can't play football and football players can't act. And you know, which, which is why this is an ingenious solution of get some actors and get some footballers <laughs> yeah, and so put them together in this film and hope it works. I mean, this film very much does not disprove that thesis. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, Michael Caine is in it and Michael Caine is technically... Uh, captain manager but yeah and i think michael kane carries the film as, yes. a, as a film I, I, absolutely yeah. i know absolutely completely there this this film does not work without michael kane and and in every scene that he is in he is doing all of the heavy lifting yeah. for 11 men <laughs> but once the football match starts i couldn't tell you where kane is no 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 i i i, I came across quite someone said he could, i mean he's 47 at this point he's <laughs> he, he's he is we are asked to believe somebody who's managed to put on weight in a prisoner of war camp. (laughs) He can't run 20 yards. It's it's sort of... The original script, apparently, was going to be much darker. The players were going to be offered... The deal was going to be that they played, and if they won, they would be taken Switzerland, and if they lost, they would be shot. And uh, and they were going to play, and they were going to win, and then they were going to be shot. Oh. (laughs) At at, at some point... (laughs) In the script of no a one, no one wants to go to see a film in which, in which Pele, Pele and Ozzy Ardiles are shot at the end. No one wants <laughs> that. So yeah, so oddly that bit was rewritten. But but okay, so this is actually a film based on another film. Tell us, tell us. Okay, tell so us there the is okay. So so the history is in the early sixties. There's a there's a Hungarian film which is premised on Hungarian prisoners of war playing against you know, playing against their captors. It's got a great title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two Halves in Hell. Two, two Halves in Hell. Very good. And that itself was based on, you know, an event during the Second World War on the Eastern Front where now reports on this start to get sketchy. There almost certainly was, and there are posters still available for it, you know, a series of games between ex-semi-professional or professional footballers in Kiev against German soldiers. And, you know, the story as it was told in Soviet propaganda after the war is that sort of the plucky Kiev prisoners of war, former footballers, the team sometimes varies in the telling, won and were then all executed. <laughs> and that's sort of the, you know, the, the basis for the, um, the Hungarian movie, which is the basis for this. Now, there almost certainly were a series of exhibition matches and many of the players that played in them probably did end up being killed, but I think it wasn't quite as stark as the, a, as the as a the, lot uh, of that stuff going on on the Eastern Front. And yeah, people were being killed yeah. for for lots of reasons. Yeah, but you know, but when, but when Escape to Victory is made, you know, the story is moved to Western Europe, and it seems it's given a much happier ending. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from Ipswich Town players and Pele, who else is in this? Give us the. So, they're, they're, give, so I mean, the, you know, the really big names, apart from Bobby Moore, is that uh, you know, you got the, the really two big names are Pele, who's um, obviously Brazilian, but has to play in the film someone from Trinidad because the film is set. Because so the film is well, it, it, it's unclear when the film is set. Yeah. It, Stallone claims to have been captured in the Dieppe raid, which puts this after forty two. Yeah. So maybe it's forty two, maybe it's forty three. Brazil doesn't come into the war until forty three. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So it sort of appears that that appears to be why you've cast Pele. I mean, I, I um, want people who listen to this podcast to know that we take the the historical accuracy of the, it, nailing down the yeah. the details of, of yeah. this kind of Which, thing. Which yeah, yeah never one of that series of weird decisions made in this film that you'd have thought you've got the chance to cast Pele in this film why don't you just set after Brazil has entered the war yes. <laughs> <laughs> makes your life much easier but no no you, you set slightly earlier so you have to say Pele is Trinidadian the other sort of really big star other than Bobby Moore Pele the really other big star is Ozzy Ardiles the Argentinian footballer and they just they just make no reference to where he's from. I mean, Argentina's not in the war at all. But this, this is just you he know, might be, oh, yeah, Spain. He might be Spanish, but they're not in the war either. No, <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah, so it's just this mystery Latin American playing very Some, good football. Somehow the, uh, got himself yeah. mixed up in it all. And, and, and a load of Ipswich Town players. And you know, Ipswich Town, when this film was made, were, were, a, were a very successful club. You know, won the UEFA Cup in the the year before. Came second in the old Division One. That's now the Premier League. To, you know, won the FA Cup. You know, this was a big club. They got a lot of really sort of top of their game, either retired or still playing professional footballers. Yeah, to play in this game. Plus Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> plus, plus Sylvester Stallone, which is another. You do feel like it's one of those films where you can literally see the moment where a producer got another ten million dollars. <laughs> oh, because because Sylvester Stallone is one of the biggest stars in the world yeah. at this point. Yeah, I'm not a massive Stallone fan, although I think he's fantastic in Copland. 
yeah. I, if, if people haven't did sort of underrated classic but at this point he's sort of he's just coming off the back of things like rocky he's he's a massive massive yeah, yeah. get he's just about to do rambo and, i mean yeah and 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 his name is his name will open a film in the states yeah. assuming you can persuade anyone in the states yeah. that they want to go and yeah. watch a film i about. wonder if he got along with bobby moore one, one of those one of those <laughs> questions i'd never really considered until today you know bobby moore well, what apparently, they talk so, about sitting around on set apparently gordon banks was hired gordon banks was yeah. hired to train Stallone to keep goal and Stallone said I don't need training to keep goal how hard can it be and then he broke a rib <laughs> doing a jump <laughs> because there's more to it than <laughs> I mean I have to say looking at the film you would never know that Stallone had been trained to keep goal <laughs> <laughs> quick dad they're in the cable car what is the moment that you would want to be called in to watch this 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 film I mean is, there's Stallone's escape is quite good. Yeah, that that, but that's, that's classic. But that you can see that in any of a half dozen different prisoner of war movies that you don't yes. call that. I think it's the ending. I think it's the pitch and yes, the players yeah, getting yeah, away. It's, it's, the, it's, it's the football match, basically. Football match, is, yeah. is is the moment at which you you yeah sort of you know gratuitous injuries from the Germans playing dirty and the referees looking the other way. It's a sort of like a comedy football match almost at times, but filmed really dramatically. She's not so dumb. There is one woman in this film, Carol Laurie. She gets an introducing Carol Laurie credit at the start of the film, but only introducing her to American audiences. To French audiences, they knew who she was. Yeah. But again, this is this is not a film that's being made one sense is for people who like films. <laughs> <laughs> Fundamentally. The casualty list, it's a very low body count. It's a very I, low body I count. I count one death in the first five minutes. We never know get the guy's name, but after that. Uh, That's a rather, a rather vicious broken arm at one point as well. Yes, well, um, we will we will come to that. The Cooler King Award for the most gratuitous American character. Well, he, he in opened a the billing. War film. <laughs> <laughs> he opened the billing, and he and he um again for reasons that are completely unclear. They say he's an American who was serving with the Canadian. With, with he's a he's a commando at Dieppe. Yes. There are American commando. Well, there there aren't American commandos at this yeah. point, but there are American observers going on commando raids at this point. Ah, so I've always so assumed he was Canadian. That, um, no, no, it is not completely implausible. The U.S. is just getting, just sort of getting set up with the Rangers yeah. Yeah. Uh, at this point, and the Rangers are modelled on the commandos, and the commandos are on the Dieppe raid. So this is not, in fact, completely implausible. But again, you could have made this problem go away, like the Pele's <laughs> Brazilian problem, by setting it in 1944. Yes, and like you know, would that make the film less historically accurate? <laughs> was, was this a question they were asking themselves? Just set the film in 1944. What's less convincing? Sylvester Sloan playing football or Sylvester Sloan playing bridge? <laughs> yeah, you're right. I mean, you, the goalkeeper training is not evident when you watch it, is it? <laughs> no. There's a moment. There's a moment in it quite early on where he does a physical full body tackle, <laughs> and Michael Caine says to him, "I've been telling you." About you can't not allowed to do that. How many times do you have to tell somebody that you're not allowed to <laughs> grab someone and punch them? I mean, that's, it's, it's not that, that the offside rule <laughs> is complicated. The the basic rules of physical assault yeah. in soccer yeah. are not. Com- I mean, how it, it, we? Why don't we move on to which sort of bleeds into this? The Broadsword Radio Award for the most completely implausible moment. Well, okay, now, it's a case of where to start, isn't it? I mean, like the, um, I mean, the, the entire plot of the film. Right. The okay. entire plot of the film is deeply, deeply, let's, deeply let's, implausible. Let's accept the premise of the movie. Within that, wh- right? You, there's there are all these slightly paunchy footballers. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean. It, it, Almost, I think they're apart from the Ipswich Town guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all retired. They're, they're all retired, yeah. and you know, no, yeah, no shade. They're all better footballers than I yeah. ever will be. Yeah, but they, they are, they are all carrying a few pounds. And okay, so if we accept the premise of the movie and we are prepared to look beyond the footballers, maybe not being on top of their game physically by this point, is yeah. it Pele playing the mouth organ? No, 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 no. It's it's the half time. It's the half time. Yes, it's like, right. you know, this... right. I, as I, I think I've said, I don't follow football closely yeah. but at half time the team is offered the chance to escape yes um, and indeed the plan is that the team will escape yeah the team is at this stage one man down yeah playing against a team who are allowed to physically assault them yes with the referees and the and linesmen the refer- on their side the, the, and the referee is on their side the referee i think at this point has not disallowed a goal but it is not implausible that the referee yeah. will disallow a goal yes it's, it's clear that the referee is not on their side. Yeah. You're losing 4-1. And you're 4-1 down. 
at this point, it is suggested we can win this. <laughs> yeah. Now, I don't know about football, <laughs> but traditionally, when you're 4-1 down at, at half-time and someone says, we can win this, is that plausible? It's, it's not very plausible. And, you know, usually, though, you know, usually when a manager gives the half-time team talk, you know, they're trying to, you know, buoy up people's spirits, get them out there to play. You know, they don't usually have the option to escape from captivity <laughs> rather than playing the second half. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there are football matches where the team would cheerfully <laughs> have jumped down a tunnel in the changing room <laughs> rather than go out for the. But second then the half. best thing is, of course, you know, we go out there, we play the second half, we get the four-four draw. It's a moral victory. It's, it's a moral victory because it would have really we would have won Five, if that four, goal yeah, hadn't yeah. been disallowed. Yeah, and then and then I, mean, I love the... that, that that's it to me is a, is a really sort of interesting football moment. Yeah, because football fans, it seems to me, have two scores in their in their head. There's the, the score that, that there technically was at the end of the match, <laughs> and there's the score that there should have been yes. if the ref had not you yeah. know, got something yeah. wrong. And to have an entire yeah. film where the moral yeah. premise yeah. is based around the score that the, the audience is really keeping but, but where then, they're ahead. Yeah, but then you, you get the end of the game and you get the pitch invasion and under the cover of the pitch invasion we see the people escaping. And you sort of think, what has been this entire subplot about tunnelling into the um, the changing room so you can escape that completely put waste of everyone's time in the end. <laughs> At some point, you know, somebody is walking into this changing room (laughs) and discovering a dirty great hole in the bath. <laughs> so we're trying to yeah. trying to work out what the hell is going on. So I think that might actually be the most implausible moment in a yes. film. Not, I, I not in a not I entirely plausible. Them film. not escaping is at uh, half time is definitely the implausible. Yeah. Moment. The, it could have been worse. It could have been worse. Sylvester Stallone wanted to score the winning goal. Yes, yes, I've heard and, this. And it? and had to be taught. It had to be explained to him that goalkeepers do not traditionally. Maybe score. that's what Bobby Moore and Sylvester Stallone spoke about. <laughs> <laughs> or Pele. But, uh, <laughs> Pele must have been paid so much money to be in this film. <laughs> so the best death is the bloke at the start, bloke at the start, because it's the only death. Yep, yep. <laughs> but, um, stiffest upper lip. Oh, it's Michael Caine, isn't it? But this is Michael Caine doing his... Can I offer you Kevin O'Callaghan? Go on, go on, make Kevin, a case. Kev, Kevin O'Callaghan is the goalkeeper who yeah. has to have his arm broken. Oh, yes, okay, so okay, the, okay. So okay. The, um, okay. Who, who oh, I think, Ipswich Town yeah. and Ireland International. This is yeah. as much as I have ever known about any football team. This is niche knowledge you've picked <laughs> yes. up of the Ipswich Town squad in 1980, hasn't <laughs> yeah. it? Try to make it a clean break. <laughs> <laughs> so the nastiest Nazi... It's the referee. Well, or the commentator. I, I oh, yes, always had the yes. commentator with his, with his fake um, yes. turning up the volume on, on the fake crowd noise that's yeah. it, who's sort of the Lord Haw Haw type figure. I think, yeah. in fact, that this film is how I was first introduced to the concept of Lord Haw Haw because I think ah. watching this film, my dad claims not to remember watching this film, but I know that I watched this film with my dad and that I was asking about this man with the English accent who's, yeah. who's doing the, this yeah. horribly biased commentary and he, that was when he explained yeah. the sad history of William Joyce. But this is an interesting... Who's he, who's he supposed... If we accept the implausible film on its own implausible logic, who is he commentating for, are we supposed to think, do you think? Well, I, I assume that this is the Lord Hall Yeah, yeah, agree, agree, agree. Back, 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 but, back, but, back but, to, but, back but to do, England. But, but, but do we think people will be listening to it? It's 1943, it's 1944. You know, you can listen to the BBC Home Service... Or you could listen to it's a football match. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, or you could listen to a football match, a rigged football match between prisoners of war and a German team. I don't know. Well, also, of course, I realise now there's there's two different kinds of football commentary. Yeah. There is football commentary for television. Yeah. Where you're sort of talking about what's happening, and there's football commentary for radio. When you have to like, explain what's happening, well, yeah, yes. you have to describe it. You know, to not Odi yeah. Ardiles, to not Bobby Moore, to yeah. you know, to De- oh, yeah. you don't even know where Michael Caine is at this point. Yeah. <laughs> sort of puffing away at the back, and he's doing the wrong kind of football commentary. Possibly the most it's implausible. Completely, moment. Im- completely <laughs> yeah. implausible. Again, the, 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 nicest Nazi. I thought we'd have a, a, a surprise category this time. Nicest yeah. Nazi, Max von Sydow. Yeah, yeah. Just a really nice Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> Just likes football. Just wants to have a football match. Wants to treat the prisoners of war nicely. Yeah. Isn't too bothered when they escape. Yeah. You know, sort of. That's fine. It's fine. Sort of redeems. Yeah. <laughs> Were the Germans so bad? <laughs> <laughs> the Dan Buster's dog prize for the most problematic moment. Smoking after football matches. Yeah, I think I think probably a, it's not really problematic. Not problematic, pro- probably it, probably accurate as well. Yes. From, yeah. I know, sort of, of miss football, football players having yeah. a gasper. Yeah, you know, sort of walking off the pitch. Yeah. And, 
Oh my god, I'm like... <laughs> but I suspect that will be one of the things that goes in any remake. Yeah, which we, is constantly spoken yes, about. Yes, there's talk about a remake, isn't there? Yeah. Sort of, I mean, you'd get David Beckham, or something. there's a whole load of people you could get Well, yeah, now. that's exactly what you'd be doing. You'd be, you'd be looking for people who were, you know, if they were taking the parallel, you'd be looking for those that were massive players 10 or 15 years ago who are now, you know, getting on a bit. You can you can tempt into it. Plus, you presumably they have they to... Don't, fundamentally, they don't mind if they get injured. Yeah, and, yeah. You know. And then, but yeah, but who's, who's going to be your Ipswich Town, though? You're going to struggle to get like you know a proper top flight club to loan you all of their players for four weeks filming over the summer. So you'll end up getting some championship. Yeah, I'd love to know. The other problematic moment I would offer is Sylvester Stallone's French accent. I mean, we could do this entire podcast <laughs> just being rude about Sylvester Stallone, and and perhaps we will. <laughs> <laughs> but he sort of he sort of enters into the spirit of the film. I think if you know what I he mean, he does. So, that's, you know, that's, a... that's true. And actually, so you say Michael I, I, Michael Caine absolutely carries this film, but. Sylvester Sloan also does a lot of heavy lifting. He does, he does. And with Sylvester Sloan, there's always the impression that, as an actor, he's trying to make this work. You know, it's clearly hit him in week one or two. I'm surrounded by all of these footballers. I don't know what on earth am I doing shooting this film. Well, let's give it a good go. I'm a big star. Whereas Michael Caine, I think that's that's slightly more... I have now met Pele. (laughs) Yes, I have now met Pele. There's nothing more for me here. But but what's going on with John Huston throughout this? You're right, he's one of the great directors of the 20th century. Can, I mean, he's, he's, he is towards the end of his career. It, yeah. can, it can only have been a large check. I yeah. mean, we need to check whether he'd recently got divorced or something. <laughs> it, 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 does, it definitely has that feeling. Yeah. That there were, or maybe he just needed a bigger house. Yeah. Yes. It, it, although, you know, it's, it's all of it perfectly well done and it is quite an but exciting also, you know, and enjoyable yeah, you, you, film. Yeah, exactly. It's but, an exciting <laughs> and enjoyable film. And as you said, it's the one your kids liked. Yes. I mean, it's a... <laughs> Yeah, maybe we're being too hard on this film. It, it stands up as a film that you you can watch today and enjoy with your family. Yes. How many? How okay? So how many films released in 1980 are still sort of being being re released and re watched? Yeah, exactly. You know, and indeed, I think in many, the end, this yes. film is a triumph. <laughs> it's okay, triumph. right? <laughs> and that's now to John Huston. Um, yeah. Very much not just doing this for the money. Yeah. <laughs> um, loose lips, the best quotes, all of that scene. Where they're not escaping. Yes, I mean it's just, it's just it's, perfect. It's just yes. yeah. It's it's a, a, I mean, I'm giving it to Pele. If we if we run now, we lose more than a game. <laughs> so, yeah, but you but you leave. You know. <laughs> Again, um, just in the but logic it, that, that these it, are it, all these are all meant to be prisoners of war, and they're all meant to have this sense of you know your first duty is to escape. That, you know your first duty is to escape. It's not to win a rigged match of football. Well, actually, but that's interesting because that's, that's one of the interesting dynamics. Is is Michael Caine as this. Slightly, he's he's an officer. Yeah, but it's all. But written. also a West Ham professional. Yeah, retired also professional a West footballer. Ham professional. And, and he's, <laughs> the film is the struggle between the army officer and the former West Ham professional <laughs> footballer. <laughs> because 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 there's a point in it actually where where one of my boys said none of none of the British are very nice, are they? Which is not obviously <laughs> talking about Bobby Bobby. <laughs> yeah, not talking about Mark Kane, Talking about these sort of the the the, the plummy British officers yeah. in the escape committee. Yeah. Who are sort of who are against all this football nonsense and yeah. got Colonel stereotype, yes. Captain stereotype, yes. and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and there is this kind of anti-establishment. There's a definite, interesting sort of early 1980s class war. Yeah. Sort of bit. There's a bit where he says he need he wants. So they they. It's never really quite articulated, but obviously the officers are in one camp. NCOs and other ranks are in another camp, and Kane says, "Well, I, I want, want proper footballers. I want I want the guys from the other ranks camp." Yeah. There are some interesting dynamics about him not really wanting, as somebody says to him, basically, the war has cost you your career. Yeah. Although he's 47 when he makes this, and he doesn't look a lot younger than 47. So <laughs> I, I, how many West Ham players are over 40? Yeah. Even, yeah, even, seems, in, seems even in the 1940s. I sort of... Yeah, the ever dynamic sort of in the, the prisoner of war film you know, aspect of it is, is the other common trope of you know, the American... And the Brits. Yeah. And, you know, and Sylvester Sloan is basically playing the Steve McQueen in the Great Escape role of, you know, trying to do his own thing, doesn't want to work with this committee, all of that. Yes. It's an interesting problem that, that they, again, again, you see, again, if you do it later, yeah. you can have American air crews. Yeah. <laughs> but if you set it in, 40, in early 43, there just aren't, yeah. you, don't, you don't have a vast, abundant supply of American. Yeah. Whether Sylvester Sloan would be convincing as an airman. Yes. No, I, I don't know. He's quite big. So how big are those cockpits? Yes. On the arm? <laughs> interesting as well. I, so interesting sudden moment of comparison when they have the training sequence. There's a, there's a training sequence where they're doing their exercises. Yeah. And the other film that comes out around this point that has a training sequence is Chariots of Fire. Yes. Which has this amazing sort of Vangelis 
soundtrack moment da, 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 when the for the which is literally we're now going to the American camp. Yeah, and this is set in the nineteen twenties. But you're going to you're going to see sport done properly. Yeah, and and Van Gallis does a completely different kind of music for you know for Americans doing sport yeah. properly. And then over here, you've got you've got these blokes doing sort of sit ups. Yes, <laughs> with, with, with cigarettes. I yes. don't think they yeah. actually have cigarettes while they're doing. They're doing sort of, there's a very there's a very yeah. odd kind of. Well, it's a training montage, which you know, yeah, you can't do a sports movie without a training montage, and this is both a war yeah. movie and a sports movie. You need your training montage because it's a sports movie. In the same way, you needed that opening shot of, of man, searchlights of man, and a man yes, being shot yeah. with barbed wire because it's a war prisoner of war movie. Yeah, but the problem is it's a training montage and the people you really want to focus on, your big stars, are really a bit too old for this. Yes. <laughs> and, it, and it really comes across in the training montage. <laughs> Can they still do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm Pelly could probably still do, still do, still yeah. do sit-ups at yeah. that point. Yes, I mean, you know, and actually, of course, of course, Sylvester Stone does the other great... The, the, the great other, training the other montage, great training of, time, montage yeah. of this era, which, which, yeah. is, which is the Rocky one. It's, it, 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 it is an oddly bad. Yeah. Given the resources that they had... <laughs> I mean, so the football match, actors can't, actors can't play football, footballers can't act. The footballers are all given sort of one line each, yeah. to, which they, uh, you know, sort of. Fine. But, they're, um, but the football match, what do you think? You're, you, I, I, I think it's actually quite well done. As, you know, in, in terms of football in a film, you know, it's, it's excitingly shot. They're helped. The football is not the focus of the action. And, you know, you can throw in all of these sort of... You know, the Germans doing their sort of ridiculous <laughs> fouling and growling. <laughs> and, yeah, and um, <laughs> the bad umpire decision, they commentate, you can cut away. But, you know, they do it. I think they do quite a good job of showing a bit of football on, and, you know, however long the film it takes up. Yeah, and Pally's amazing overhead kick. Yeah. I mean, you would want to be called in for the football match, I think, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... One other completely implausible moment that just struck me is the idea that Sir Sloan is going to escape and the thing he's going to do is go and contact the Paris Resistance, which we now know is the most dangerous thing that you could do. More dangerous <laughs> yeah. than escape from a prisoner war camp is go and talk to anyone in the Paris Resistance yeah. because it's utterly compromised. Yeah. And that's, that's sort of to the extent to which that was that was known at the time. Obviously, yeah. and then get recaptured to bring the message back as yes. the plan. Yes, and, that's then, right. yeah. and he's going to come back to the same camp. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that all seems to me yeah, yeah. worth dying for. How does this stand up on repeated viewing? Right, so I've only seen it three times. I actually, I, I enjoyed rewatching it. Look, the thing is, lots of the films that we talk about are either sort of, you know, historically important, dealing with historically important things, or they are important films, sort of defining a genre, yeah. defining, you know, later filmmaking, but they're often quite challenging. This is just fun. I mean, it's fundamentally fun. So I, I, I mean, I quite enjoyed it. Yes, and I think if you know, I think if you have any sense of who the players are, I mean, I yes, you know, I know who Bobby Moore is, and mm-hmm. I know who who Pele is, yeah. and even and that for me was quite jolly. Yeah, Duncan, is this the operation that changed the course of World War Two? No, <laughs> no. And usually when I answer that question with no, I've got more to say. But in this case, just just no, no. just no. no, just no. It's just it's it's just not. Just that's not. No, no, no. And it doesn't claim to be. That's, that's no. enough. Um, just a huge amount of fun. I, I, I hope somebody's watching it this, uh, this, this World Cup. Ladies and gentlemen, escape to victory. That was A Pod Too Far with me, Robert Hutton, and Duncan Weldon. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe, and if you liked it, rate and review us. You can drop us a line at podtoofar at gmail.com or on Twitter at podtoofar. If you want to watch along with us, next time we're doing my favourite Christmas movie, The Great Escape.